Hey guys, and welcome back to another digital art cast. Thanks for tuning in and checking us out on iTunes and YouTube. Um, it's been great the last couple of months. Um, we have been growing the audience uh, for our interviews. Um, but just a quick uh, housekeeping update. Um, Colin, Colin Cyril, who's been uh, co-hosting with me since the, the start of the ArtCast, um, will be leaving us. Um, hopefully I'll try and get Colin back for uh, a final talk before he shoots off to his new career. Um, but with time and with projects uh, that Colin's working on, he just doesn't have a lot of free space to um, be recording with me real regularly. Um, we're in talks with a couple of guys to try and get someone to take Colin's place, um, but he will be sorely missed. Uh, and we wish him all the best at Digital Artcast on his future career. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for tuning back in again. Yeah, like I said, uh, this interview um, is going to be Timothy Rodriguez of ILM in London. Um, Tim and me met back way back at a industry workshops uh, last year. And uh, yeah, we talk about a lot of things. We talk about his uh, start in France and where he learned concept art by doing a lot of plein air painting. Um, his career took a turn when he started uh, teaching. Um, in his 20s and of course his initial move to ILM in London. Uh, if you guys want to hear more of these interviews check out iTunes and YouTube at Digital Artcast and subscribe for some of our, our bigger interviews like Matt Rhodes and Borker Erickson um, amongst many others and uh, yeah guys here's the episode jump in uh, thanks. Tim, um, here we are, um, back, yeah. <laughs> back, back again in another, another interview, Go for Digital Artcast. Um, just want to thank you first for giving up your time. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem at all, man. It's a great honour to have you. Um, the weirdest thing I think last year was when um, I was sitting randomly in yep. industry, industry workshops and um, I kind of turned around and noticed your, your name tag. I was like, holy shit, it's Timothy Rodriguez. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Um, and I had my one of your pieces on uh, my yeah. my yeah. F- my phone wallpaper because um, I was a big fan. I was quite, going in, I was quite surprised to see that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think it's even it's interesting when people do a lot of artwork for production or, or just stuff that, or their own merit, and then people are like, "Holy shit, you're such and such," and you're like, "Oh, well, really? Yeah." Yeah, I mean, you don't really notice that you're into that industry until you go to that type of workshop, and then you see like people know each other and uh, yeah that, that's really cool and that's a initial workshops obviously are you going back this year as well um i don't know i think i'll try to go there because uh, mostly because a lot of my friends go there so it's a great uh, opportunity to see them and yeah. talk to them so uh, i think i think i'll be there next year yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think it, do you just tend to go to catch up is it less about the the talks for you or is it more just about meeting people well um, to be honest, uh, last uh, last workshop was not really f- uh, for the talks to me. It was mm. more about um, seeing my friends again and meet new people, talk mm. to people. So I spent more time actually talking to people and uh, less time going to the talks. But yeah. um, I guess it depends on, on, on everyone, you know. Mm. If, like if it was a few years back, I think I would spend more time uh, at the talks and trying to get as much information as they can so yeah yeah but again, I guess it really depends on what, where you are and what you feel like doing so, yeah 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 because because obviously you're working now as a concept artist so you know i mean obviously you're always learning it's one of these things where i think in this industry yes. you never stop but uh, like you say that's it's a rare opportunity for you guys to, to all meld in the same room quickly so um yeah. so yeah yeah um and particularly usually catch up with i know i think when uh, it was funny actually the, just before i went and done the show last year um, I think two or three weeks previous, my first interview for this podcast was uh, Titus. So yep. yeah, I also interviewed him, and then a couple of weeks later, um, got to meet him at uh, Industry Workshops, which is great. Um, and he's a great guy. Um, is there any particular the show you usually catch up with, or um, what do you mean? The... Oh, just uh, just I mean, is there is there one one or two people in particular you go you know to try and catch up with, or some some people you regularly see there, or 
Uh, I don't know because uh, last year was my first time there, uh, right. but, but I know that like some of my uh, French friends were there, uh, right. some of my co-workers were there, right. um, and you know, you just hang out with them and you meet their friends, yeah. and you talk to them, like yeah. lots of my Facebook contacts were there. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, so. Yeah, probably too many people to mention because there's so many people go to it, so yeah. Well, I think, yeah, there's too many to mention. I mean, yeah, yeah so many yeah. great talents there. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's that kind of event uh, that goes really fast and you, you take everything and, yeah. you know, then you think back uh, a few days later and uh, you realize what really happened there. Yeah, it's all kind of a blur. Especially for me, for the first time there, I think it was uh, the four days goes in really quickly, um, or well, the three and a half, but... Yeah, it was yeah. Great, great getting to meet some people, even like Aaron Beck, obviously, for, for wet yes. and stuff, that was a big thing, so, um, so yeah, so, I mean, obviously, we met back there last year, we've talked on and off on Facebook, um, but, you know, your career has spanned long, long way back, um, before you even moved yeah. to London, because now, obviously, yeah. you're, you're an ILM as a, a junior concept artist, yeah? Yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. And it, it's a bit recent, because, I mean, it's been like 10 months I'm, I'm at ILM now right so yeah yeah it's just a, a recent development but then kind of going back to the start I mean you can go all the way back if you want um, even yep. how you got into mm. art I mean was was concepting something you wanted to do quite early on well I think uh, it first started when um, when I was a kid um, I loved uh, spending time like reading the comic books of my dad and um, I was really fascinated by the drawings yeah. So I, I tried like to reproduce them, and uh, I really en enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, then I don't know. I think I kind of stopped drawing. Um, I was becoming like like uh, a teenager. I was playing video games, yeah. um, and there was like a forum. I, I was um, I was in. Uh, it was like a video games forum, mm -hmm. and there was a graphic design section. Oh, cool. Um, and I remember seeing for the first time uh, like a digital painting. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah, I don't know, I was maybe 14 at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I found it fascinating. So I knew I had to buy a tablet and use Photoshop. So yeah. I was just doing it for fun, you know. Yeah. I, when you're 14, you, you don't really know what you're going to do. do yeah. yeah, you don't think about that, that stuff. But I, I know I was spending like, hours and um, all my weekends, my holidays, just painting stuff um, yeah. on the shop. And uh, I think then I, I discovered um, like conceptart.org, CG oh, cool. Society, yeah. CG, and all those communities. And then I realized that uh, it's really something serious and you can earn money from that. Mm -hmm. It's a real job. So I think at that point I, I knew um, that I really wanted to do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I kept doing it, and I um, it, yeah, it got more serious, mm -hmm. um, and you know, uh, kind of led from there. And I, I, it's, it's funny, even just seeing, uh, quickly noticing that at the start of the talk, you you talked about how uh, comics was kind of the first thing or the yeah. first avenue to drawn. Nearly every person I've ever spoke to in concept art who has ever, even Justin, <laughs> was the same. It's always been comics. You know, they want to be comic artists. They read stuff like Jim Lee. Uh, and back in the day, yeah. and Tom McFarlane, and always copied their drawings. Um, so yes, yeah, so yeah, you, right. yeah mm -hmm. I mean, when you're a kid, it's so fascinating to see that, and yeah, I think it, there's something beautiful about uh, yeah. comics. But then I think comics is a great example as well because um, it, it plays on a key aspect of what is involved so much in concept art now, which is storytelling, cinematography, yep. layout. Um, even, yep. the, even design. So I mean, it's it's, it's a huge or a great uh, yeah, avenue for people to get in. Uh, because, yeah, you have to, like, express an idea just with lines, which mm -hmm. is very, I mean, yeah, it's beautiful in a way. And you have to tell a story, like you said, you have to think about the composition, you have to think about the next frame. Yeah. And it's building up like that. And it's not just drawing for the sake of drawing, you know. Yeah, yeah, there's a, yeah. There's a purpose behind it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so then... Uh, I think what I did was, well, obviously I went to college. And, yeah. Uh, it was really frustrating because I knew I, I had like uh, three years to go mm -hmm. until I, I could like study um, properly uh, that field and yeah. professionally. Mm -hmm. 
so I did those uh, three years, and then I went to um, I did two years of uh, graphic design. Mm -hmm. Which was, I mean, at the time there was no concept art school in France, so right. the closest thing was like graphic design, right. which yeah. was really good. I mean, I, I've learned uh, like perspective, um, mm -hmm. colors, I use stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I only did two years, and then I I moved to Paris. Right. Uh, I had some friends there that were on uh, like. Uh, French forums of uh, illustration, mm -hmm. um, and I got an internship in um, in, uh, in a company called uh, Pretty Simple. Cool. And then I, I worked there for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So at that point, uh, yeah, I knew. I mean, um, like I, I succeeded uh, for my you know personal ambitions. Uh, yeah. I knew I, I I got money from what I, I love doing. So yeah. that was was not a lot of money, but um, it was a really good milestone for me personally. But it was rewarding, obviously, because you were getting to do something that you were passionate about and something that you wanted to do, rather than having yeah. to go and do a, a 95 kind of, like everybody else in an office or something, you know, so it's, you know. Yeah, it, was, sure. it, it was not like uh, posting on forums and get feedbacks. It was just um, earning money from that and working yeah. with a team for a project, which yeah. was... Uh, really, really cool. So, what was the when you did your first job there? Just going kind of spreading out the first job you done. What was your main kind of duties? Did you go in as a concept artist at the time? Because it's always interesting when people go back a couple of years. Um, because concept art has really had a defined name and job since maybe two thousand ten. Yeah. So, were you doing you know kind of concept or backgrounds or environments? What were you doing? Well, I don't think we can call that concept art. What I was doing, it was more I think illustration. You know, it was like a hidden object game on Facebook. Right, yep. So we had to paint the backgrounds. So we did ah, like, we yeah. started by uh, doing thumbnails and then the art director would pick one and then we, we push it. Like we had, I don't know, three, four days to make a really um, like polished illustration. Wow, and then yeah. we had to put like 60 objects, <laughs> which was a pain in the ass to be honest. But yeah. But we had techniques, you know, we, we came up with uh, like a, a bank of uh, objects, like a huge PSD with uh, with like objects that we would reuse. And yeah. that. So it was not really concept art, it was more, yeah, illustration. Can I play an illustration? Yeah, yeah. It was really interesting for me because I, um, that's, I think that's how I really learned about perspective, light, mm, values, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, the job was a bit boring, to be honest. So yeah. with my coworkers, we really um, we were really interested in like fundamentals. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what uh, kept us going. I think yeah. we were watching like lots of uh, Scott Robertson videos. Uh, yeah. That's when I started to go outside and do plein air paintings. Yeah. So yeah, that was a, a, a period in my life where I really wanted to explore and get better and see like what was like color what was values you know stuff like that yeah actually uh that's one of my, my current moments in my career just, uh, so far is the fact that uh, i got to meet scott robertson um when he came across to edinburgh um yeah. he was through tracing his scottish roots um as most americans try to do um but uh, yeah. i took my my how to draw books and stuff and uh, he signed them at the front and drew a wee car for me so oh, cool. yeah that was that was my 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 uh, cheesy moment where I was like, "Oh my God, Scott Robertson, yeah, total fa <laughs> fanboying out." Um, but no, Scott's yeah. a great guy. So I'm actually I'm hoping at one point when he's got a bit more time, he's going to try and come on here and talk to us. But uh, I think that'd he, be great. Yeah, he, yeah, I think he's a great teacher. To be honest, his books are fantastic. His, oh, yeah. his Noman videos as well are great. Oh yeah, ridiculous. I mean, like even uh, Feng Zhu when he was doing a couple of his, his FCD podcasts, he was saying people were like, "Oh, when are you going to uh, write a book?" And he was like, "Look, Scott taught me, and he's wrote a book, and nobody can teach yeah. better than him." So you know, all you need yeah, is just get book. Scott's books. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, which is interesting. So as well. Yeah, interesting as well. He's because he's just getting back into teaching again, so he's been posting new stuff on Gumroad. Uh, I don't know if you've seen. Ah, yep. uh, yeah. So I mean, that was for me was a total. A fan moment again because obviously I was just waiting for him to get back into into drawing um, and uh, uh, yeah yeah and obviously now that I've got on Facebook uh, all I really usually see in his feed is pictures of the car he's building so yeah yeah that's that's pretty <laughs> crazy I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. He must yeah. love cars I mean. oh yeah well he's, he's passionate about design in, in general I think so getting to hand build the parts and put it together yeah. himself it's another side I think he's never really got to in the automotive industry um, but it's funny because it it shows that. 
uh, Scott is not only interested in in, in, in drawing, in nice drawing. Yep. It's more about the, the core of things. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think it makes sense. I mean, I was not really surprised to see that. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Yeah, the guy's <laughs> awesome. Um, so going back to your career, obviously, you, you, you're you yep. on this first job. You're doing your patents and more illustration stuff. Um, were you looking on the horizon? Were you looking for elsewhere to go? Was there other jobs you think yes. where you're going next? Yeah. Um, I, I started getting like freelance uh, offers. So that that's when I, I really thought maybe I should leave mm -hmm. because I was getting bored and uh, I was working with uh, Lucille Meunier mm -hmm. and uh, Rudy, which were uh, yeah I mean Lucille left the company mm -hmm. and um, I think I should I, yeah in my head I was like yeah I should do the same yeah. um, I think it's I I felt it was time for me to do something new yeah. and I started getting you know freelance offers so I yeah I just quit. And um, I work like for Applebot, mm -hmm. some illustrations. Cool. Uh, I did like maybe six months of uh, freelance. It was mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I was doing a lot of plein air paintings. Nice. As well. Yeah. I was really trying to, you know, get. Yeah, I enjoyed being like out of that company, and uh, it, it was great. But I was like, yeah, let's go outside and paint with my friends. <laughs> uh, and then. A friend of mine, uh, Geoffrey Erno, right. works at Riot now. Uh -huh. He was teaching in, in a school in Paris called New Edge. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think he left because he found a job in the UK. Mm -hmm. So there was like a, a teaching uh, job available. So he right. asked me if I was interested. Uh -huh. uh, first answer was no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't see myself teaching because I think I was like, 20, 21. Which can be intimidating at that age, yeah, that's going to be a big ask, yeah. Yeah, yeah because some students, you know, they, they are the same age as, uh, as you or yeah. even older, so that's a bit weird. But yeah. but I met the, the uh, how do you say, the boss of the of the school and he was a really cool guy and, and we tried. I did one uh, class mm -hmm. for, I think, a week and mm -hmm. it was great. Were you and, shaking the whole uh, yeah. time? Were you, were you like this? Were you, <laughs> were you nervous teaching them the first time? Yeah, well, I, yeah, I mean, at first it was a bit scary, but I ended up working there for three years. So wow, yeah. Yeah, it was great because I had like lots of free time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, working, teaching in a school, it's really beneficial for you because you, you know, you have to explain uh, like things the more more clearly possible yeah. and stuff like that. So I think I I learned a lot there. Yeah, and and you have also like direct feedbacks, and um, it's really interesting because I could answer a question I wish I I could ask at the time when I was a, a student. Yeah. So I really tried to give like everything I knew and encourage people to like believe in what they do. I mean, lots of young artists they just you know, with everything you can see on Facebook, it it can be a bit intimidating for. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it seems like this unreachable uh, kind of uh, industry. Oh, dude! Every morning I go on art station and I just cry for like <laughs> half an hour. Like it's just, yeah. yeah. I mean, like even before, um, I mean, going back before 2010, um, before I left my job to kind of pursue art. Um, I knew enough about concept art at the time, but not a ton. It had mostly been what I'd seen through documentaries. I think I always talk about yeah. this. The first one I watched was the God of War 3 making, the guys in San Diego. Like behind the scenes. Yeah, and they're making <laughs> yeah. the paintings. Actually, the first, obviously, because it was the God of War team, um, was at Sony Santa Monica. It would have been uh, Cecil Kim was one of the first guys I saw drawing All stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, and actually, um, he might be coming on as well. But yeah, again, um, that level, I was just like, wow, that'd be cool. And then as I left... I've quickly found it was even back then. I mean, you're talking no more than five or six years ago. It was harder even then to get to learn stuff because I think at the time all I really knew about was Nomon. Um, but yep. I think stuff like obviously like Cube Brush had just only just started in the last two years with Mark, yeah. um, and then obviously a couple other things that had come up. And Art Station was still in its infancy. It was really young. Um, and then that's why I think even students going forward now are going to be so spoiled because 
even five years ago, there was nothing. There was no as much yep. stuff on the internet. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's, it's... it's all over the internet. I mean, you you get free education on YouTube. You you have lots of great gum roads. Yeah. Uh, at the time, it was only like conceptart.org and and people talking to each other mm -hmm. and helping each other. But that's it. I mean, uh, yeah, I think it's a bit more easy today because you have more material, but you have more material to to choose from. So it's a bit. Um, intimidating probably like you don't yeah. know where to start yeah uh, stuff like that so i mean the core basics are probably the best things i mean even i mean and it's yeah. crazy because you know when it comes to my art skills i'm, I'm very amateur i've only done it a couple of years um but luckily just in the last couple of days um i found out i was going to start at a studio in glasgow um access animation who are up here yeah. Um, so I was over the moon, obviously, that I got that, that position. Um, but then, Congrats, I, man. yeah, thanks, man. Uh, my first proper, first proper studio job. But um, but the, you know, I've even found students now coming to me or guys on Facebook asking me for advice, which is crazy because I know next to nothing. But I try to just pass on the stuff that other people have told me. Um, yeah. And the first thing I point people is like, well, you know, Feng has a whole YouTube channel full of painting and advice and podcasts that are totally free. Like that is a huge point to kick off from. Uh, Scott especially who has so much stuff free on Gumroad like you know uh, people are just spoiled and it's great because uh, it, it's less work for me and rather than me having to try to explain the, the basics of concept and I can just point them straight in the direction of YouTube yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah that, that works for them so uh, that's yeah. really good that I mean people some people are willing to help each other and stuff I think that's a, the great thing because mm -hmm. you, you learn from it as well I mean even like if a student asks me like a very basic question I will learn from, from it even yeah. if it's no. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Even giving feedback on one of the, the guy's uh, pieces somebody sent me the other day, um, the advice I was giving him was just basically the things people had told me. I mean, it was like, you know, when I was looking at his composition and character stuff, I mean, he was doing a lot of hero shot stuff, and I was like, oh, that's great, but, you know, maybe break it down into, like, uh, character design sheets with orthographic views, because a lot of, you know, studios like to see that detailed yeah. breakdown of your process. And I'm sitting saying, where the fuck did I learn that from? Like, it just came straight out of my head, and I was like, "Oh shit, yeah!" Because when I asked that question a million times, that's the answer I got. So, yeah. um, but it's good. But it's good because uh, you get to send the elevator back down and, and teach other people coming up. So it was great. Yeah. Um, so okay. obviously, you taught there for a couple of years. Um, yep. so were you getting the itch kind of towards the end that you wanted to get back out and work in a studio? Um, yeah, I mean. I don't know. I think it took me some time to uh, want something new. Um, right. Yeah. I started getting like offers in uh, studios, like in China and stuff like that. Yeah. I was. I had the possibility to go to Eidos in Montreal as well, okay, uh, yeah. which I turned down. Wow. Yeah. Because I just moved uh, with my girlfriend, and um, yeah, like few months after, I got the opportunity to go there. So it, it was not a an easy decision, you know. It's, yeah, because uh, such a big but, studio. Yeah. Yeah, I think you really have to think about: um, is this gonna be good for me? Is this yeah, totally. a good opportunity? Is, is it worth it? I mean, on paper it can sound sound good, but um, you'll be there every day. You know, yeah. it, it's not something um, easy. And then you're gonna talk to your friends and yeah. tell them, yeah, I work there, it's great. You know, so. But I started, you know, um, wanting to go back in the studio mm -hmm. and work closely with uh, in a team. Yeah. And um, and yeah, one day I got an offer from ILM, and I mean, I I talked to it with my girlfriend. Yeah. She works in the film industry as well. She's an editor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so she she knows how rare can be those opportunities, yeah. and you have to. I think you really have to grab them if you think that's the one opportunity you you need and you, you think it's going to be beneficial for you. I think you, you have to just do it. It's not a, as easy as it seems, but uh, I'm glad I did it. Yeah. I mean, because, well, ILM is, I mean, we all know who, but, you know, where ILM has come from, the stems. I mean, we all grew up, you know, me especially, a, a yeah. Star Wars fan. I mean, so. Um, any oh, excuse okay. to, to uh, I mean, and people always think that ILM was exclusively just for Star Wars, but they don't realize that. I mean, like there's even so many good stuff, yeah, right? yeah. There's so many, so many films I've worked on, so much sound design they've done. I mean, even the biggest one for me. I mean, when I kid when I watched Jurassic Park for the first time, um, yeah. you know, the, the work they've done in that has, has set the, the standard and the bar for you know so many years in VFX. Um, 
and then I yeah. mean I realized that when I when I went to the their website when I got the offer I, I knew I am obviously but um, I, I just wanted to you know see uh, a bit more and um, yeah. yeah I mean lots of, of classic movies and yeah. uh, lots of memories from my childhood yeah like I, I remember like my parents had like hundreds of uh, VHS uh, mm -hmm. tapes, you know, yeah. and I was just playing them and watching movies and those movies, I mean, lots of them, like Spielberg movies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Diana Jones, Jurassic Park. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, you know, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of a dream for, for the kid who loves, you know, movies. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it was definitely a surreal moment for me even, um, I went to the movies to see Doctor Strange recently, obviously, so yeah. I mean, like, the credits came up and I was, you know, we usually sit for the post credit scene anyway, and, you know, your name flies by and I'm like, holy shit, I've met that guy. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was the same for me because uh, you know you never know if you're gonna end up in the credits. It's it's not like yeah. if you work and if you're in there, it's not like that. Yeah. Know? But yeah, it was great. Yeah. Did you like the movie? Oh, I mean, like uh, I did a whole thing on my our podcast channel where um, there was a, a quick clip on the set to you. I think I did say it to you. It was one of the guys from um, the like a, a games kind of channel thing in in America. Oh, I saw that video. Funhouse. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I've watched him for a while. Uh, they're with uh, Rooster Teeth now in Texas, but. Um, yeah, James did a whole thing about you know the art team had this like squash little yeah, yeah the and he was digital artist like yeah hundreds of them yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, it's and some... they did the the hard work yeah I mean I mean the, guys did the hard work yeah the, I mean the, like James is saying the guys who literally put blood and sweat into the movie you know what I mean and they, they I mean like it's an interesting conversation I mean you could talk about this for hours but recently when I just spoke to Justin um, we were talking about the whole film industry especially in Los Angeles and how. Um, a lot of the people who work on stuff don't get credit and how there's a whole yeah. movement there now of people trying to get unionized because there's so many people getting undercut or you know shafted basically and not really getting a lot of respect or money that they deserve um, and it's, it, it's crazy because you know like you said you guys are up with the spent you know ridiculous hours working on all of that stuff and getting rushed quite quickly because I know um, I did hear kind of round round about the, the, the way that um, I think Strange had a couple of reshoots and there was a lot of VFX stuff that was yep. changed last minute um, so you guys oh, would yeah, have been, yeah, yeah you mean, guys would have been pushed to the wall I mean bit. I started working on the movie two months before it was released so <laughs> Jesus. you see what I mean and I, and I, I was still doing concepts yeah so that like once uh, Marvel was happy of my concepts, yeah. people had to build it. Oh wow! And would would come out loud, like in two months. So it was really, Jesus. I mean, for me it was really intense. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, lots of work to do, little time. But yeah. those guys, like the the digital artists doing 3D, the compositors, mm -hmm. the generalists, those guys like worked so much. I mean, yeah, I think they did the the hard work. Yeah. I was. Yeah trying to visualize what it could look like but they have to build it and make it real yeah yeah oh my god even the the whole city of i mean like the, again i didn't really answer your question because i talked about the the funhouse thing with james willems but uh it was more i was going to say was that especially for a marvel movie it was the most visually stunning i had ever seen i mean a lot of the um, I forget the name of it, but the world they step into where they twist the buildings oh the dark yeah. dimension yeah oh, yeah, no. yeah 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 um yeah, that stuff was um, was ridiculous. I mean, it was it was so well executed. It was so incredible to watch. Um, and, and and even you know the whole signs thing they done with uh, the symbols, um, yeah. the, the magic part of it. Uh, it was great. I think Marvel took a bit more risk on this one, and, and yeah. I'm glad the movie did well yeah. at the box office because it shows that people are willing to see some new stuff, some different stuff, not. <laughs> The classic superhero movies that can be boring sometimes. Yeah, I mean, because obviously most people know the X Men and Wolverine, but again, when it comes to Doctor Strange, people are kind of like, "Who the hell is that?" You know what I mean, but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not a very uh, well-known no, character. Yeah, I mean. yeah, and I think uh, I think I also played the Benedict. Um, you know, playing it uh, just absolutely incredible. I think he was amazing in the role. I think it really suited him down at a tee. Yeah, I really like him, and yeah. I think it was great in, in that role. Yeah, I mean, definitely, I think he shares the kind of same thing with the guy, uh, Hugh Laurie does uh, House, um, when kind of English guys try to do thick American accents, I think sometimes it's <laughs> a, it's, a, it's a bit weird, but yeah, he still pulled it off, so um, yeah. Uh, right. But no, I mean, I, and then that's obviously, that's one you've worked on, but since you've been at ILM, you would have worked on, you worked on kind of several films so far, or? Yeah, yeah, um, I, I'm not sure I can talk about. No, 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 no. Uh, all the ones uh, you can talk uh, about. <laughs> But yeah, what's great is that they really 
like like the team we have in London is, is fantastic. I think yeah. Yeah. we like sometimes one people one guy we work on on one movie and then uh, I'm working with uh, Julian, Jason, Holly, mm -hmm. and we work on the same movie. And sometimes one of us will go and, and work for for a few days on that movie because they need like uh, VFX concept art for that particular shot. Right. So I mean, yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, the projects are great. Yeah. Uh, the people I work with are, are great. Yeah. Really good people. Yeah. Um, I mean, and then when it comes to concepting as well, I mean, people, you know, again, this is great, again, these interviews, because it breaks into a place where people who aren't in the industry already don't know what their day-to-day is, kind of can be, because the day-to-day -day thing is different in every studio, so, I mean, when you come in on, like, a project in Doctor Strange or anything else like that, I mean, what kind of is your day-to-day? -day? Do you come in and then there's a kind of set list of things for you do? Do you have kind of stand-up meetings most of the time to talk about, like, milestones and stuff, or...? Well... Well, it, it starts with like a, a brief uh, from maybe like the art director or the VFX soup. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, it starts by gathering references, I guess, and mm -hmm. um, doing sketches, trying some stuff, showing it to the VFX soup. Mm -hmm. uh, then the next day you'll go to dailies mm -hmm. where we have like a big screen and we look at the shot and what's what everyone has been doing. Uh, yesterday basically cool. and um, then from that we we set up a plan for the day and mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, yeah I mean I think at first you have to like do a range of different looking concepts and mm -hmm. from that we can like pick one or two mm -hmm. and go to that direction push it mm -hmm. um, lots of different versions I mean for Doctor Strange I, I was working on um, you know, like the dark dimension expanding uh, yeah. in Hong Kong. Go I was working on those shots. Right. Man, I did like hundreds of versions for that. Like how how like the edge of the dark dimension would destroy the buildings. How like the ripples would, um, you know, lots of versions. Yeah. Yeah. And lots of exploration. And yeah. uh, you know, you get feedbacks. You work on it. You you get new feedbacks and the more you work on it the more you know um, how to handle those uh, problems and to yeah. solve them because um, it's something so you've, got yeah. to get right, you've got to get that right really quite early on because with Strange as of like our other couple of Marvel movies it's a very visual film it is a very um, the magic and the, the cinematography and a lot of the, the world he's in is what kind of pushes the story so I mean that's got to be key more than any other film you've probably worked on Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I think yeah, visually, I mean, it, it was great. Mm -hmm. Lots of great shots mm -hmm. they did in London as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good that, like you said, it was not just visual effects for the sake of visual effects. It was yeah. sort of the story. And, you know, it's always good to do something that's a bit uh, useful in the movie. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, like the Dark Dimension, for example, had, has a strong uh, impact in, in the story. Mm -hmm. It's the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry for the, those who didn't watch it, but <laughs> I'm not going to spoil the, the This isn't a movie podcast, this is an art podcast, so you guys can just fake off. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, but again, w with the, the stuff that is, you know, more comic book based, I mean, were you guys drawn directly from source? Like, were you looking at the comics and graphic novels, or were you pulling from real world influences, or...? Um, well, to be honest, I, I don't know. I think people who worked in uh, pre-production, they probably like used uh, the comics as an inspiration, especially yeah. I saw, like for the Dark Dimension, like all those abstract uh, shapes, uh -huh. they are they directly come from the comics. Oh, yeah, cool. uh, I, was, I was working in post-production, so uh, it was more gathering references of uh, from real world and right. applying that to like the, the spells and... Like the, set, like the yeah. cities they were in and stuff, like if they were going to the places in Shanghai and that, you were obviously having to take influence from the city they were in and research that. Um, yeah, that would be interesting, actually. Um, even a small university project I've got just now that I'm finishing is, yeah. is, is a, to set a, a, a set of three Grand Theft Auto characters, but in a setting they've not been before, so I've chose Tokyo. So I'm doing a, a heavy research of the city in Japan just now and, and influences from the people that live there in fashion. Um, Pinterest is a fucking godsend, by the way. If oh, everyone, man. Oh. Well, uh, it's really annoying, I think, uh, Pinterest, but 
Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good material there. I, I just don't like the interface and how it yeah. I, I don't get it, but yeah, I, I mean, I it, know there's a lot of great stuff there. Yeah. Too bad it's not iRes, but lots of good stuff there. Yeah, because it's, it's pulling from all over the internet, so I think that's why it's difficult to get things that are consistent. Um, but it's definitely, I, I definitely think they need to try and incorporate a feature where you can build mood boards straight out of the things you're. Like, cause ah, you, that'd be great. Yeah, because you can build boards, but then you can't physically, you know, clump them together and then. You know, yeah. bring them out as one thing. It's it's all over the place. So, um, but no, I mean, like There's something that we've been using recently called uh, Pure Ref. I think it's a free software, right. and you can basically like screen grab and put stuff on that board, mm-hmm. and you can like uh, select them, and it's gonna rearrange them. You can save uh, that file. Everybody uh-huh. can open it, and you get the same like mood board, right, and you cool. can add stuff, save again. So oh. it's really it's a great. Program. And that was Pure Ref, did you say? Yeah, yeah Pure Ref. Right, cool. Well, there you go, guys. So they're an exclusive Tim's gave you. <laughs> no excuse now. It's really good. It's really I'm, good. I'm just writing it down just now, actually, because I'll be using it myself. So, um, right. yeah, cool. No, I mean, like uh, people who always say that about these advanced tools for gathering stuff, and I always just say Pinterest. It's, it's one of the easiest things, I think. Because obviously there's Google Images, but Pinterest, I think, collects them in a way, or, or you can categorize stuff in a way quicker than Google Images. Yeah. So, yeah. I really like the fact that when you find an interesting image there on Pinterest, you you get like a, a selection of new stuff that yeah. you can click on and get new stuff again. So you can yeah. like narrow your search towards something very specific. Specific, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is so great. That, that's really good in in Pinterest. Yeah, yeah. That. And then uh, obviously when you're doing stuff uh, within ILM with it, with the shots and concept, and are you are you doing more environment stuff? Because obviously environment, I think, is your background. Are you doing, are you, yep. Did you get to do character stuff as well? or? I'm definitely not doing character. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, to be honest, I mean, even in the studio, I mean, few people do characters. I think right. I doesn't do a lot of characters. It's you mostly environment stuff. Uh, yeah. London specific, but um, I mostly do, like, shot paintings mm. or production uh, sketches like just to visualize uh, what's the what the story could look like yeah yeah um, so yeah it's a lot of environments you can have characters of course but um, what's great is that if I work on like um, post production shot you already have the characters so yeah. you, you have to paint the effects or the background mm-hmm. because the, the actors you know and everything was shot already so you know you don't have to like paint them yeah I would use a lot of reference if I have to. Uh, I mean, that, and, and that's interesting though because uh, I mean, you know, um, um, Suzanne Helmick. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. She was in the, at the industry workshop. Yeah, well, of yeah. course. Yeah, and I know her well. Um, I wasn't sure if you knew her, but um, she recently on on social media because she's so forward facing with with giving back to you know through Twitch and through Facebook and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Um, she had a whole thing just recently where someone. Um, was attacking her basically for using reference to paint, and right. yeah, and it's, it's something I've not. I was going to cover it in an actual episode with one of the guys I, I work with, but um, now would be a great time because obviously you are an accomplished conceptor, so you'll know, and you work in the industry. Um, that this is more just for people listening because so many people don't know. But how important is it to use reference? And I know the answer already, but you can tell us obviously. Man, every time, like, yeah, I always <laughs> think again, like. I should have used more reference, yeah. more reference. If you take the time and search like for an hour or two, take your time and just find the right references because you're gonna, I mean, there's so much stuff you can't in- invent, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would uh, yeah. be ridiculous not to use references. Oh, I mean, it's just, I mean, there's so many people yeah. I know who are like, um, like they see it as cheating or they see it as like a, a quick way to even when you know i've done some matte painting in the in the past and you know um guys who talk about you know matte painting isn't an accomplished painting technique because you're using photography um yeah. but it's 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 a pipeline thing you know it's a whole thing of pushing out the quickest visuals uh, the best way you can the quickest way you can so well yeah it, it's a different tool like using photos or using whatever charcoal i think yeah. it's just a tool you in the end you have to come up with an image and, yeah uh, you have to think like how you're gonna patch those photos together and you have to think about the composition and that stuff so that's why i think like drawing is not about drawing it's about what you are willing to do with it and yeah. you could do the same with music, with whatever. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. not—it's not about the technique. I think it's 
Um, yeah, it's beyond that. Yeah, I think it, the end result is really what matters. I mean, how you get from point A to B is usually defined by you as an artist anyway, but as long as the result at the end is yeah. meeting the criteria, then it, it should be fine. Definitely. I mean, yeah, I mean, even there was one, I think, Suzanne done uh, not too long ago, it was like a, a dead skeleton lying on the floor with an axe, um, and uh, she'd used, uh, I think, a 3D posing program for the, the skeleton, and then yep. uh, a lot of reference for the metal and stuff. But at the end, that's what gave it that realistic tone. But that's how she could push it so far because the detail and the polish was already there, and the, the reference she was using, she was just replicating that with paint. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in the end, the, the client doesn't really care about uh, like what tools you, you use. I mean, yeah. they don't even know the tools you use. They don't. Oh, no, yeah. They don't really care. Yeah. Uh, I think as a concept artist, what you have to do is uh, knowing like what would be the best tool to get to from point A to B. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's important to like, learn new software and stuff because it gives you more tools. Yeah, I mean, um, definitely, because I'm using more and more 3D now, which is coming more commonplace, um, the concept. And... Yeah, I think, yeah, nowadays, I think 3D is really important for concept artists. Mm -hmm. uh, I refused to see that, like, years ago, and I was seeing lots of people using it. I was like, wow, what's the point? I mean, yeah. I, I want to paint, you know, yeah. I want to be, like, sergeant or... Oh, boot. yeah, yeah. I like photos and references and yeah. which is a bit foolish because those guys they use references they were painting nature they were uh painting what they saw yeah you know yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever gets you to to the point um because sometimes you have really short deadlines mm -hmm. um so you really have to think what's the best tool to get me there in a short amount of yeah. time and really efficiently with less mistakes possible you know yeah if you do it from mine well obviously you're gonna have maybe screw up yeah yeah you're gonna be more proud of yourself because you achieved something but to be honest nobody cares yeah it's yeah in your head, you know and in the end i think it it's still a job you know you have to people give you money for um to get artworks yeah. and they, they don't really care about how you do that yeah. i mean at work everybody is using different softwares it's really interesting so you know we can compare like uh, ZBrush and 3D code, which is the best. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, it, it always comes down to 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 the result. Yeah. Oh no, definitely. I mean, and I think I think sometimes when people bitch about the methods used, I think that usually is the break between hobbyist and professional, um, yeah. because professionals everywhere understand the process you go through and why you do it, whereas a lot of hobbyists can't see that. Um, you're not staying pure to the to the to the tradition yeah. of painting, but then even people now who are hobbyists who use Photoshop and you say, well, you do realise you're using a digital program to make paint. Like there's no traditional aspect of acrylics or oils or colours. You know, you're using a digital program, and it's 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 yeah, it's two sides. It's the same questions. It's exactly the same. I mean, you, it always comes down to fundamentals. Mm. You have to to do that painting. You know, you can use watercolour, Photoshop, whatever. Yeah, I think it's a lot of people. Uh, maybe think too much about what software, what tools yeah. uh, are the best. I think you should just paint and just do what you like. Yeah. Do it for yourself. Just try some new stuff. Try try softwares. Uh, yeah. Maybe some guy don't like that software, but maybe you love it. Yeah. I um, mean, I mean, it's even like uh, Nikolai who works out of Procreate like exclusively. Yeah. Like all he uses is an iPad. And, uh, and, and it's uh, really good. Oh and yeah, ridiculous. I tried using, using Procreate. Oh, man. I, can't, I can't use that. It's uh, so clunky, I think. Well, I mean, I would say recently go back to it because um, they just had a huge update and they, they've now incorporated stuff like um, PSD layers and everything. And it's, yeah, totally uh, yeah it's, it's getting more like Photoshop every day, but um, but it's great that it's only one cost that's a couple of pounds and then, you know, obviously you can use it you know, wherever you are. But I think for sometimes... Um, it's like any software. It just the more you use it, the, the quicker you get to to understand it. Um, interface is key, man. Like interface with everything I've ever used. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, like now that I've used Maya for you know a year and a half now. Oh yeah, Maya. So yeah, our course teaches oh, Maya. Man. Uh, Tell me about it. <laughs> oh man, like that, I mean, that was the the biggest thing of this art to get past it was was the interface with how you know how to make a sphere. Okay, and then like learning stuff like bevel and chamfer. Like once that was out of the way, I was like, oh great, now I can make my objects a bit more solid. So. Um, so I'm currently working from end of year project on a sci-fi corridor, um, yeah. taking inspiration for a lot of the guys who done Star Citizen. Um, so you know, taking a lot of the, the stuff like that, and it's kind of horror-esque, so Dead Space. Um, but yeah, Maya's been great for it. Yeah. But, yeah. 
that, that's how you learn. I mean, yeah, you, you've got to start somewhere. And yeah. You've got to try stuff. Yeah. You've got to have fun. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, mine my, is obviously a bit more difficult, I think, but uh, I've heard guys using... I know I watched a, a podcast once with uh, uh, Shadi Shafari and um, yep. Aton Zana, and I think Aton was saying he used a lot of uh, Modo. Um, yep. He says it was really good. He got good results out of that. And to be fair, bet- yeah, between Max yeah. Modo and Maya, uh, they are all very similar interface-wise, so if you learn kind of one, you can transition between each and other ones, so... Yeah, yeah, I really like Modo to be honest. Uh, yeah. The only thing I don't like it's uh, it's not really stable. I mean, right. yeah. I've learned a lot of uh, w- like work because it crashed and mm. you know it's a bit clunky. Yeah, but it, it's a really great tool for modeling and quick renders. I think yep. it's great. The, yeah. the Fox system is really nice and the modeling system is great. Yeah. And the interface is really close to Photoshop. I think it's it's a good tool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a bit less scary than Maya, yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of people use uh, their stuff before, and they've said that Modo's probably a good in between. Um, even uh, Ash recently and uh, Maciej Kutiara have been using stuff yeah. like um, ZBrushing and Keyshot um, more and more. Uh, again, guys coming yeah, through these. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's yeah. there's loads out there. I think the difficulty though is with Photoshop. There's so many programs for painting, but there's only more than one or two people use. But when it comes to 3D, man, oh my God, there is an endless list of stuff. Even yeah. try texture just now. Like just getting, I've just discovered Substance. So Substance for texturing. Um, but then even like say there's 3D Coat, and then there's Quixel, and then there's a million there's other so things. Stuff, oh, man. so much stuff. Yeah. And um, in the end, like I'm, I'm a bit like you. I, I want to try like uh, get to ZBrush and stuff, but man, I I, I just can't. I love 3D code because it's simple, for example. And I know ZBrush is really powerful, but I, I can't get my mind to 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 use that because I don't know. It's oh, yeah. yeah. I, I always come back to the, the stuff I know. To be honest, like Modo, 3D code, Keyshot, because it's it's easy to do. It's it's fast and yeah. it gets to the point. I mean, I don't want to spend my time like typing numbers like. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You yeah. Know. Well, with 3D code, it's good as well because it, it's kind of half uh, ZBrush, half substance, so you can texture and, and sculpt in the one thing. So, um, yeah, I've seen a lot of guys. There's a guy I know, um, Tobias Coep, who works out in Newcastle, and he does a lot of low poly environments, quite Blizzard, Blizzard-esque stylized. Um, oh. So, yeah, I mean, the 3D code is his weapon of choice, and I've seen them get some really good results with it. Um, so, yeah, definitely. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's getting better and better. Yeah, and so much. Such, more accessible software because like in the past again these things only used to be open to industry guys or they were like, priced so you only could afford it as a studio but now um there's a lot of free licenses there's a lot of trials there's a lot of people get oh yeah know, yeah uh, it's not that expensive actually i think it's oh like yeah it's, 300 it's, something you can even buy it on steam and get the um, like education version yeah which yeah. is really cheap yeah, um, yeah. I mean, even like uh, stuff like uh, what was it, the other day we were talking about um, Octane Render. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which is like five hundred pound or something, but um, it's so powerful. It's ridiculous. Man, the guys that that work, they all use Octane. It's it's great. It's yeah. fantastic. It's so fast. I mean, Modo compared to Octane, it's it's really really slow. Yeah. You, you get fast and great results with with Octane. I should get. Uh, into it. Invest, well. yeah, yeah, that and Keyshot, I think, are a couple of things I need to invest in at one point. But, uh, but no, no, no. I mean, it's the, there's so many tools out there, and, and there's uh, such a wide gambit of tutorials online. That if you want to learn a software now, there is no excuse. There are so many things. Um, yeah. I think just yeah, you should just pick one, learn it, and, and just use it and uh, as best as you can to make yeah. great concepts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. There's a guy. Uh, I'm sure he's French, actually. Uh, Romain. <laughs> Romain Cha, Cha, oh, his name I think is Wizix on uh, online. He does a lot of hard surface stuff. He done a Hulkbuster at one point. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember uh, the guy's name. Uh, oh my God! Right, okay, I'll come back. I'll, we'll talk about it later. I'll send it to you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's fine. Um, uh, but anyway, so, I mean, so wrap it up, kind of we're towards the end, Tim. Um, Already, really? yeah, 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 that's it. I mean, we're, we're, <laughs> the hour has passed. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, just thinking uh, advice wise or, or kind of key tips, uh, because we try to talk to everybody about how they think people should try to get an industry now. What's your kind of something, like, especially 2D concept? What's the kind of things that you think people should be aiming like portfolio wise or networking wise? You know, what, what's your view um, on getting in now? I think first, uh, like you should take your time and learn fundamentals. Um, 
one thing also, if you want to work for uh, video games, I think you should be aware of uh, what good view, uh, video games company do. Like, for example, get uh, get some nice art books of uh, video games you love and, and look at them, study them and uh, try to understand what those companies are looking for. And that's going to be your goal. Um, I don't think you should go on ArtStation and just copy what you see there because it's, to me, it's more like, it's not really concept art. It's, it's, yeah, it's more like illustration and nice images, but they don't really um, serve like a product, like a video game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you want to work, for example, for the film industry, I would advise people to watch a lot of movies and be aware of what's been done, like for the last few years, and um, read a lot of books, for example. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just basic stuff to try and fill your mind with the industry you're going into because, um, I mean, I think it would be very naive if anyone went into the film industry especially and wasn't a film watcher. I mean, cinematography, there's so much of it learned just by sitting watching a film. Like, you've not really got to study as much, just envelop yourself in what you're watching and try to understand why they're shooting that way. It's probably... Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, you, you don't even have to draw. You yeah. just have to observe. Yeah. And you have to understand, like, uh, why does that composition uh, is, like, scary or, I don't know, why is the light doing, creating that, that mood? How yeah. does that work? And it's not, it's not drawing, it's not painting, it's just about observing how things work. Yeah. And you have to show that in your artworks, I guess. Yeah. You have to use that. Yeah. And maybe some companies will be interested in what you do because you understand those principles and you can apply them. Yeah. And you can create and offer something new, probably. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, like again, it's it all comes down to style. I think it's what studios look for more and more is having a unique style or a unique take on things. So, um, I mean, the one thing I was told ages ago was not to try and co- cookie cut or copy other people's yeah. work directly. Try and come up with your own interpretation. Yeah, exactly. You have to find your own language. Um, I think also it's great like to to do lots of still lives and uh, plein air paintings because uh, you're gonna focus on fundamentals and not really thinking about the tools, the brush, and the style. So yeah. you're just gonna, you know, you just focus on on learning those principles. Yeah. And the more you do it, the less you're gonna think about the technique, and it's gonna be straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. And you can use that for professional works. Uh, so yeah, I think definitely yeah, it's good. It can be good to copy like master painting and stuff to understand how people simplify trees, rocks, whatever. Yeah. Because those guys they, they spend their life um, trying to to show form best, like to show colors at at, at its best. Mm-hmm. And it would be a bit foolish not to you know. I mean yeah, those guys spend their their, their life. Uh, asking those questions to you know yeah so no, definitely, definitely yeah. Good, but yeah. yeah don't be a slave of uh, <laughs> like copying definitely yeah. yeah um okay well i mean that was great tim uh you know cool yeah thanks very much for coming and talking to us that was awesome man. thank you it okay. was great yeah great um stay tuned guys we'll come back with, with another episode soon um make sure to check out digital artcast on itunes and youtube and all the other places um and of course tim um you've got your own website your own art station is that just tim timothy rodriguez uh, as well uh, yeah something like that probably yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, all the all the links will be in the show notes guys you can check them out and check tim's work and uh, you go and stalk him online um i'm sure it'll be great to have all these fans rushing towards him now <laughs> the whole the whole 10 people that that, that, that listen but no we've, we've got 150 subscribers on youtube and uh, a couple of hundred people are on the podcast and itunes so it's you know it's picking up it's yeah, good subscribe to the channel guys yeah yeah get on it um okay but uh, that was great and uh, uh we'll speak to you later thanks very much guys see you later eh? Thanks.